Hello, everybody. We are back. As soon as Will gets in here, we'll start talking about Wheaton Warrenville South. Oh, hey, Will. Ethan, long time no see. <laughs> How are you? It's good. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you again. Um, are are we are are you ready for this? Because I mean, I thought I was, but I mean, there's just so, so much that happened over this course of this weekend that to discuss. And uh, I love that you said on the schedule where it was like to whenever we're done, like because that's kind of how the competition went. So you perfectly put that. You're talking um, so, yeah. dangerous because I I cannot do another 4 a.m. night. I'm old. I'm 22 years old. My body can only handle so many 4 a.m. nights, Ethan. You're a trooper, man. You, you, you were a trooper. You were a trooper come comp Sunday. I had to leave after prelims, but, I mean, I was up late, late getting – trying to get details from people there. So it felt like I was kind of there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was li – on my drive home yesterday, I was listening <laughs> – my Wisconsin podcast from last week and at the end of that episode I said you know what I said I'm firmly convinced that I will be up for the time change and sure enough at 3 a.m. there were the Zionsville Royal Airs performing <laughs> about being old and yeah which is great by the way because aren't their bedtimes like six yeah yeah it was it was a phenomenal theme to cap off the night but I was listening to that and I'm like man like I, I really did fulfill my own prophecy and and here's the thing I think we can just have this discussion right at the top and then we can get it out of the way. I, I will give lots of credit where credit is due. We ran on time for the start of the morning and then we fell behind. And then we got back to kind of sort of being on time for the start of the varsity division. And then we fell behind again, but then they eliminated a break. So we were pretty much on time for the start of El Paso. And then uh, things kind of spiraled from there. And, and there was no reprieve after that. But this was a competition that fell behind and then got back on schedule multiple times. So it was not for a lack of effort, I think, from everybody at Wheaton. I think it was just kind of the circumstances. Was that how you saw it? Yeah, it was kind of funny because I got there. I was like, whoa, we're like on time right now. They're, like, they're doing a great job. And I actually got a preview of it Friday night. And Friday night, they meant business. I mean, I know junior high sets aren't, you know, big as mixed, but everything was to a T of when everything started and they were doing a fantastic job. And so after uh, single gender, I, I left for a little bit and it was, it, they were a little bit behind, I believe, or something like that. And I kept texting the people who were there. I'm like, so what's going on? Are they still on time? You know, the classic text when you leave a competition and you have no idea what's going on. And they're like, oh, we're actually like ahead. I don't know how that happened. So like, I'm rushing back to the comp. And I got there like just in time to see uh, Lincoln Southwest and Pleasant Hill. So that was kind of a pleasant, oh, pleasant surprise, kind of funny there. But I mean, this, comp this competition, I mean, I just want to give a big shout out to, of course, the volunteers, the hosts themselves. It was kind of funny because I walking th through the homeroom, sometimes you see all like anytime a group would walk in, they would always be singing a song or something, a little chant. And I'm like, I don't know how you guys are doing it right now. Like, I I'm just here as a spectator and I'm gassed. And you guys are here for hours on hours on end, greeting every group the exact same. Was welcoming arms. Uh, besides that, it was a fantastic competition. Um, I thought it was ran pretty smoothly. Of course, you can look at the time and be like, well, it ran. But, I mean, everyone kind of expected that. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was a great competition. And uh, we have someone wanting to join if if you're down. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I, I don't even know who this is. So I this know. Is it's kind of surprising you it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah. so, it was somebody who was there it was somebody on the ground it's ella hey there we from go we yeah. Wardle south hey all right how are you ella so first question did you win any money off betting on what time the coral classic would end um unfortunately not we all lost <laughs> i don't the, think the house won the entire pot yeah that, that sounds about right so second <laughs> Second question, this is one that you can actually answer. What time did you leave school Sunday morning? 
I left school around 4 15 a.m. and I went to bed at 5 so I was up for a full 24 hours I was there at 5 30 in the morning so <laughs> it was quite a, <laughs> it was quite a day but um I wouldn't change it for the world even though there was some timing issues obviously like it probably was one of the best comps I've ever had to a chance like host but obviously like be at so it was a wonderful experience Ethan what time did you get to bed on Sunday morning Oh, well, I was, I mean, I was up to like one, which seems way earlier than you guys were, because I mean, it, but you know, it's still kind of late. Um, yeah, that's when I went to bed. A question I have for you, Ella, uh, what job did you have specifically? Because I know you're a host, but I saw you running around everywhere at any moment. So is there like a specific title to what you had? And what did your job like include? So I was hosting Broken Arrow Tiger Rhythm, who did amazing it was like incredible to see them perform mm -hmm. um but then i was also doing awards and i ended up serving chick-fil-a for a few hours i was absolutely running around doing every possible job so i think that like you can say the same same thing about every other volunteer like we were filling gaps whenever it was needed because the comp the comp was long and it was exhausting and it was it was great to have everybody just <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to live podcasting. Uh, <laughs> stuff happens. So, yeah, I, I, I think Ethan and I were also part of programs that hosted, and I definitely my senior year, I I was kind of you. Where at, uh, all right, we're, we can talk amongst ourselves. For yeah. A bit. See, my senior year, I was definitely Ella, where I was on judges table duty during prelims, but then for final before finals. I think someone looked at me and they said, you need to go be a hall monitor. Here's a walkie talkie. Uh, and, and here, and you're getting thrown in a group chat of room hosts. And I said, what? And they're like, <laughs> just go do it. And I was like, sure. So I, I totally understand how that is. Ethan, did you ever have anything like that happen to you when you were hosting? So, yeah, I, I mean, I was kind of, I mean, I helped out wherever I could at any moment. And when you have, I mean, we had four groups majority of the years I was there. So you have so many helpers of, of students and parents and all that stuff. So it's almost everything was almost too much covered at Mount Zion Invitational sometimes, where it's like, oh, there's way too many people, people here. They're standing around because you don't want to, you know, get in people's way. So I did stage crew. Um, I hosted a bunch. I think my senior, my senior year, that was where COVID happened. So groups couldn't really stick around after. So I actually ended up being a live stream host, which was something we never done before. So that was kind of fun. I got to do it with a buddy of mine named Jaden. Uh, so that was super cool. So uh, yeah, those COVID times are crazy to look back on how we had to like clean the auditoriums too. That was a different job. Like we had to go around with like leaf blowers of sanitation and all that stuff. And that's something we could talk about later. But I mean, yeah, I mean, like you said, Ella, just bouncing around everywhere you can. And I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, especially when a comp goes that late. I Like I couldn't imagine how many spots were like almost unfulfilled like and you didn't even know about it like i bet there's I bet you guys had so many conversations in the classroom if you guys have a class about like just debriefing and like what happened because you guys had probably had no clue over the course of two days yeah i think that's a great question like what has that unwind process been like for you um, um it was a little rough sunday i pretty much slept most of the day <laughs> Um, but today we still had rehearsal, so um, I know a lot of the classic kids are at rehearsal right now, but our director just debriefed everything and like, right. like all the like all the like little blips we had um, going over that, but it was definitely a comp to remember, so it was pretty awesome that we had that everything that did happen that happened, but I think it was done with grace and dignity and poise, which I think is a lot to say for a comp that ran until three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. we got out of here. Yeah, I quick. I, I think that that is that that is a great a great point is that I mean so I wound up going to a concert on the North Shore of Lake Michigan and it was a it was a fifty five minute drive and so I left after Low Sal and I got back right before mixed finals but bless her heart when I pulled into that parking lot at eleven forty p.m. there was a woman with the with the little airport batons like waving me to where to park yeah. and I'm like I'm like you do not need to be out here right now but but thank you for being out here. So um, I, I guess one one question, you said that you served Chick-fil-A for a little portion of time. Were you legally required to stop selling the Chick-fil-A at midnight since Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday? Oh, no. Um, so we, 
We ordered, we ordered a ton, a ton of um, Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I think by, I think a little bit past midnight, we did end up running out um, because a lot of kids like that were leaving, got their dinner and then left. So at that point we were out of um, a lot of food, but most people weren't eating past, I think it was like 1 a.m. Um, we were like down to some of our like last big options of food, but we sold out of all of our Chick-fil-A, so. <laughs> I think it was right around midnight 1 a.m. where we were hitting that point. Yeah, and you guys had some amazing options there as well. Because I remember just walking around back and forth between, like, all the options you guys had. And I was like, I don't know what I want. I guess I'm just going to be basic and get pizza. And it was amazing. So uh, I don't I don't remember everything that was there. But it, your guys' variety, of course, was insane. So that's another really – if you want to go to Wheaton, you're, you'd get fed. You would get fed. Yeah, I, I think it was also pretty pretty economical, too. And it's very interesting to hear the differing perspectives on this because like I, from the competitions that I've gone to this year, I thought that the concession prices were pretty reasonable, but then I, I was walking past a table of kids uh, while I was going to go get my lunch and they were complaining about how high the prices were. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, you guys don't know how good you have it because the, the prices were so bad at the last competition I went to that I, I literally left and I went to raising canes yep. and then I, I came back before finals. Uh, they, you know, you guys had Rosati's Pizza, which was great. Andy's Frozen Custard, which uh, I don't have up here in Wisconsin. So I didn't have any because it was kind of cold, but that was a treat. I do understand why a lot of people were uh, eating supper before they left because I think even before the schedule came out, I was kind of scoping out the area for like 24-hour restaurants because I'm <laughs> like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, it'd be nice to like chat with people after the comp gets over at like 10 or 11 and and that didn't happen, but there's also not a single 24 hour restaurant within like miles of that school. So I, I see why the kids were, were, I guess, getting their entire fill before leaving. So you, you said that you got home, Ella, at, at roughly like 4.30. I mean, were, were you able to fall asleep quickly or were you running on so much adrenaline that it was actually a little tough to fall asleep? I think I came home home and I like collapsed into my bed it was I was trying to keep that energy up the entire time before because we had to reset all of our classrooms I was like I was like moving desks around with like with like half open eyes because at that point all the groups had left and I was like I just I just want to go home so I fully fell into bed like with a full face of makeup on which <laughs> the greatest choice um but hey what can you say 24 hour day Ethan what do you got uh so I know we're kind of getting to the performance aspect of it, but was there a certain performance that you were able to watch even with you all running around that uh, you wanted to highlight that you liked? Um, so I actually saw a decent amount of um, performances, but I was able to sit in on Center Grove's warm-up room and holy wow, it's like they, if, if I could, if locked in was in the dictionary, like they would be the definition. Their performances were just mind blowing. It's crazy to see like the differences between like how like us in Illinois do show choir compared to like the like the best of the best in uh, in like Indiana um but it was like every minute I was completely engaged in their show and I was it was mind-blowing really like probably one of the highlights of my year was watching them perform and it's definitely one of my favorite shows I've seen so yeah props to them for such an incredible season there we go I think Ella I I think I'm actually just about out of questions for you. So, Ethan, do you have yeah. do you have any more? Yeah. So, I, I believe you might have a performance at the end of the year, but you are a senior. So, what was it like performing one last time with Esprit on a stage in front of all those people? Um, it was it was really crazy. Um, that was probably one of the bigger crowds we had. Um, because if we do make finals, we go pretty much the first second group. Um, and girls groups going at eight a.m. in the morning. The crowds are a little slim um but it was really great to perform for people who pretty much have never seen our show because most of the groups that we went up against didn't come to wheaton so it was really cool to like show them how we do show choir and our shows i super fun this year and it was really awesome to have like one last hurrah in our comp season yeah and i don't know how you guys do it because like I remember all of our last performances always, you know, you always have your group of people that were bawling on stage and somehow they always clump up and they always like hold hands or something. You guys were so professional. And uh, I know the emotion emotions were going though as well, probably on the end. So I just want to congratulate you, uh, you and Esprit on a great season. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was, 
it was a really great way to end our show. And even though we didn't end maybe on the note we wanted to, like having that nine streak, making finals all the times we did, I've, I'm really proud of what we did. Awesome. Well, Ella, thank you so much for coming on. So uh, we'll let you go here and hopefully you can get uh, better sleep tonight than perhaps you did last <laughs> night or two nights ago. I'll try, but I have about 10 tests this week and <laughs> our fundraiser show. So I'll try, but y'all have a good night. Thank you too, Ella. Thank you, Ella. So Ethan, I regret to inform you that we are 15 minutes into the show and we have not even <laughs> talked about the results yet because that's just the kind of day it was. I think real real quick, I think I saw I, I saw Bradley Davis join uh, a little while ago. Bradley, if you're still in here, we'd love to have you on for a couple minutes. For sure. Man, playing the man with two hands, Mr. Davis, if you're feeling funny. And I will say, Ethan, you, for, for all of the, the victim points that a lot of people will get for being at Wheaton the entire day, you were here, there, and everywhere on Saturday. You were at, like, your sister's basketball tournament, and you were, you were so many places. So I'll give you a lot of credit, too. I think Thank you. we were both pretty much wiped uh, by the time that, that Saturday was over. So I, I actually, I, I can't even really talk here because I wound up skipping the first five groups of the mixed division. Uh, because as happens at show choir competitions, you just see people and you wind up talking to mm -hmm. them. And then you're like, who's on stage right now? I, I don't even are, know. So, are we on time? Or yeah. Or, or what? Uh, yeah. So that's the thing is I was just like, well, you know, so that was, uh, that was a thing. I think before we, we talk about the results, I think one final thing that I want to say, and you can say whatever you want after this, one final thing that I want to say is a a huge shout out to the Wheaton Warrenville South volunteers because allegedly they were short staffed on Saturday, but I guess short staffed at the Coral Classic is overstaffed at any other local show choir competition in the country because I'll like it if you tell like ninety percent of show choir parents to do the things that the Wheaton Warrenville South parents were doing, there would just be an open revolt. Like, I, I came back at midnight to watch the mixed finals, and I kind of roll up my sleeve to show the lady at the door my bracelet. And she's like, hon, she's like, if you're here at this time of night, I don't care whether you have a bracelet or not. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. I'm like, I appreciate it, and I appreciate you being here. Because that that'll, that sentence alone was like, okay, at least we're, we're still alive and trucking here. So I yeah, big shout out to all the all the volunteers because there were so so many of them throughout the day. Yeah, um, I remember Friday night. I I walk in with my mom because I have two siblings performed on Friday night for Mount Zion Sound System, which they took the W. So congratulations to them. Quick shout out. But um, yep, little dub. Um, but I walked in to get my wristband, and this this parent just goes Homer. I'm like in my head, you know. I'm not thinking about anything else, but like trying to get in this auditorium to watch them perform. And I'm like, no, I don't need to go see the homeroom. I, I don't need to know where the homerooms are. I, I'm good. And then she's like, no, homeroom. And it took me a second. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, homeroom. She's like, yeah, homeroom. She's like, and then she's like, we were expecting you. And I was like, well, that's, that's, that's all. That's crazy. Cause I never had anyone come up to me and like specifically say, we've been expecting you at a show choir competition. I was like, whoa. I was like, so, so, it was super cool to talk to some of the parents and people who knew us from that aspect of show choir and that they even watch our content. So thank you to all those parents for expecting us. Um, so for, and like you said, on the stage crew dads and all that stuff. I, so when that meme was sent to me today about choirs who asked the risers to completely go off stage, I was like, well, that has to be the first one I put because the amount of times I just like, I would look away after a group was done. I look up and there's nothing on stage. Absolutely nothing. No risers, no number lines. It was just blank. And then all of a sudden, like in a flash, every riser was on stage. Um, parents from every group. I mean, this competition was very well ran. And it was super, it was also like another thing I want to shout out really fast because I know we need to start, start talking about results. Hey, we're taking it's like when the, as long as we yeah. need. To. Yeah. So when the, uh, so when the uh, auditorium was packed for the last few mixed groups, you even had parents scouting out seats for individuals to get into the auditorium, which is something I've never had to experience before. 
like someone walking down the aisle and being like, is that seat taken? And they'd be like, no. And then it'd be like, he would hold up like two hands or whatever hands, how many seats were open. And somehow it got relayed to the parents and they came down and they sat out with the spectators. So, I mean, it was down to a T of what Wheaton had to do. And I think they did a great job. So we have another guest wanting to join. Are you ready? I am ready. It's kind of <laughs> There's so many people who could join. Who do you think is going to be a guest? I'm not, I'm not even going to take a guess. Just bring him in. Okay. Okay. Well, here, here he comes. Oh, it looks like he's a little driving. It's Michael. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we are just now having a Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So, Michael, are, are you surviving? Like, are you okay? Because you were there with me until the very end. So, honestly, you would think that I wasn't even there, right? Like, I woke up literally the next day, maybe at like, it was like maybe 8 30, 9 o'clock. I think it was 9 o'clock. And I was like, oh, wait, just chilling, right? Like, ready for the day. We went out all day long. And I, I think maybe I went to bed at like 10 30 last night, but like, not. Uh, anything you would not expect that we were somewhere till 4 a.m. Like, because we stayed our hotel was downtown, so like after the cop, we drove like 45 minutes back to downtown. It was maybe 4 or 15 by the time we got back. Man. Yeah, man, yeah. that's uh, I mean, I, I dropped someone off on my way back to my hotel, and I was still in bed by 4 05. So, I uh, props to you for driving. <laughs> all the way to downtown Chicago. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was your first show choir competition in Illinois, I do believe. So I, I guess, and, and obviously there weren't a ton of Illinois groups there, but seeing groups from Illinois and Nebraska and South Dakota and Missouri, I think, how was, how was your first in-person taste of show choir from this area of the country? So um, it, it was very, very different. I kind of like, you know, watching the videos of all the different shows over the years, you get like how you can kind of expect that. But until you're like actually in the gym or actually in that auditorium to hear the sound, to like see, like to see the difference, um, it definitely, like the only way that I would correlate it is like you could tell like some groups have similar choreographers. So you see like a little bit of that. Other than that, like show design, attention to details, like truthfully, like, I felt like nobody from Ohio really could have made any noise this weekend if, had they come to Wheaton. Because it was just like, this is literally the best of the best from the entire Midwest. And we got, like, COVID hit us pretty hard, so we got a little bit of catching up to do. Um, but, like, you know, seeing all the Dwight Jordan groups and then, like, knowing Marysville also has Dwight Jordan, it's like, okay, I see a little bit of that. You know, Zionsville has Randy Sage, Marysville and Fairfield have Randy Sage. So it's like making those little bitty connections and you can see like, okay, maybe this song or so, but even like just the structure of the show, the design of the show, vocals are insane, insane, insane. I know like my group and as well as a lot of other groups, we get hit pretty hard by judges for like our like Midwest Cleveland accent with really flat A's. So to hear like Low Sal and Center Grove and, and like even like Mitchell, kind of surprised me with just like how crisp and clear and like beautifully toned their vocals were so that was awesome good i kind of did want to make a point um that you just brought up about like parents i was sitting next to um some parents from from lincoln southwest um and they, they just like were talking and like just mentioned that their daughter was listening to a podcast and i was like oh wait like home road podcast like the one that I was talking about this predictions and all that and she's like wait yeah you know about that and I was like yeah I like right with those guys like they're all right there sitting up there so I turn around and went to you and she's like oh my goodness so um I don't remember like I didn't even ask the parents names I know the girl's name is Mallory I believe um and like she they were just so like excited to be like getting recognized and being like people know who we are and like they're telling talking about us every week and like she, like she, her daughter was assigned to be the person for the group that like listened to the podcast and go and report back to everybody what was being said. So like we're we're getting out there, and the mom was like, "Well, now we need somebody to write for Nebraska." And I was like, "Well, 
<laughs> yeah, we uh, we we had a lead on someone early in the season. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and uh, it's a shame because I feel like we're talking about him almost every week on Show Choir Nation. Yeah. But Ethan, uh, what questions do you have for Michael? So first, Michael, all I gotta say is when it was winding down at prelims, and you know you're kind of getting a little tired, but you know those big groups were coming up. I say is there was a moment where I take took a look back and I saw you and your sparkled uh, blazer and I was like Michael's styling right now and he's over there socializing having a great time and I, I just want to say it, it looked like you're having a great time and isn't it your birthday today? Yes, it is my birthday today. Happy birthday! Thank you. Happy birthday! Thank you. Thank you. Oh <laughs> um, yeah, and you touched on a really good point that I didn't even think about because I think I take it for granted to where I am in show choir landscape is seeing choreographers and how they have their little thing with each group. And it's so cool to see how different those groups are, even with those same choreographers. Right. Like, I mean, I've watched Steven Todd for so long, but sometimes I can't even tell that it's the same group he choreographs um, besides some of the common moves he does, which, I mean, I mean, at that point, I mean, they're all great, but, um, so, to comment on that, like, I've never seen a Steven Todd crew. So, when Mitchell was done, I literally just sat there and was, like, in awe. Like, I was like, I know these kids are exhausted. And then they came, like, back to the auditorium, and they're, like, dripping sweat. But they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever, like, talking. And I'm like, I would be dead, like, a towel on the floor, like, literally in a pile. Because they were nonstop that whole show. Yeah. Yeah, they surprised me with how much energy they came out with. I mean, I came up and I was like, well, it's the end of the day. I feel like this is Mitchell's spot to lose. And they came out and they just, like, grabbed it. And I know we'll talk oh, yeah. about all the shows here in a little bit. But um, besides Mitchell, was there any other group that was like, whoa, like, first time seeing them or a group you really wanted to see, you know? Um, I mean, I honestly, every show I literally avoided watching anybody who was going to be athlete because I knew I wanted to, you know, take it all in. I think for me, I was almost like trying to play myself down for Los Al just because, you know, with them being the California big three, they have a big name. So I didn't want to be like, get in and be underwhelmed by what was like performed. And then they went and I was like, that is literally the best thing I've ever seen. Like on that, nothing will ever top that. Like, it, it was just earth shatteringly good. Like, it like was moving, and then I got up and turned, stood up and turned around, and um, you guys know like Robert Sabrina from ETC, he was there, and his wife was there, and she was literally like sobbing, and I'm just looking around at everybody else, and everyone's sobbing, and I was like, yeah, like that that was it, that shook the earth. Like people will hear, like if you live in those houses across the street, I know you heard the gym erupt when they were done both times, because it was just amazing, amazing, amazing. For sure. Yeah, I think one of the things, touching on Los Al specifically, we can turn this into a little bit of a Los Al discussion. One of the things with Los Al specifically that I thought was really good in the specific context of them coming to Wheaton was that this is not one of the years where the story has to be explained for you to you to even begin to comprehend their show. Like, I'm sure I don't have the full story of the Los Al show because I haven't heard it from somebody associated with the program. But from watching the show, even once, I saw it twice, but even just watching the show once, you can still have a pretty basic understanding of what their show is about and understand it. And it's not really the stereotypical, you know, like IQ curve, like shows with no theme, shows with a theme, California shows with a theme so intense that you have to understand it to know the theme. Like this one felt where like you knew the theme or the story after one performance. So I think it did play really well to a crowd that, let's be real, probably 90 to 95% of them had never seen Los Al before. Yeah. I think, like, comparing that to, I guess, the, my best example of one that I still don't get to this day was their 2019 show. Because, um, like, I, I, like I said, no idea. I get, like, their 2020 when they did the Leap of Faith movie. Like, once you explain that, then it's like, okay, you can go and look that up, and then you watch the show, and then think, okay, that makes sense. But that 2019 show is, like, I, nothing nothing seems to like correlate with it or like anything like that so i i liked that you sat there and watched it and you didn't have to ask any questions like you just it, they told the story and it wasn't like 
you know, almost like a musical theater show where it's like, oh, it's about this character and they sing the whole song and they, like, they're the focus, but like they told the story and everyone else on stage just really helped to deliver the message. It really helped to like create the scene and really, I don't know, it just, again, was moving, very moving. I loved it. Yeah, so, so so my little tad bit with La Salle is whenever I watch a show for the first time, I just try to take it all in, you know, every little aspect. I don't try to dig deep into it. I try to just take it for what it is, that face value. And then after that show, I was just like, what did I just watch? I don't know what I just watched, but it was amazing. Like, I got the theme and all that, but I was like, I need to see this again. Like, again, again, and again. And I've been lucky enough to see La Salle once before. And I was supposed to see them in 2020 before everything got canceled. So this was the first time I've seen them in like six years. So the group has completely changed from then. No, but it's still the same. It's on yeah. You. Yeah. No, I see why Will gets on you for everyone you've seen and getting to yeah. do, travel all these yeah, places. I know. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I was about to say before Will says that. Yeah, but no. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had a really cool aspect of where I sat because I was able to kind of see behind the scenes a little bit i was off to the side and for those that don't know or that we're seeing it on the live stream or just at face value uh mullen camp their director was backstage the whole time off to the left and he was just in the show with the kids the whole way through and he was showing ever love support um he was even like singing the lyrics and he was bumping to them he's like giving them as much pump as they can um it was so super cool to see how even he was getting into the show and almost like how he was performing. Um, I was also kind of surprised that they didn't have someone come out unless I missed it and direct their ballad because yeah. that was the first time I've seen Moss Out do a ballad with nobody directing them. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the show, if you haven't seen it, I believe it's on YouTube somewhere from the first competition. I think it's on YouTube from this competition as well. I don't know if it was finals or prelims, but of course, please go watch it. Um, the lights were great in the prelims and everything was just spectacular. And I mean, it almost felt like, it almost felt like the first Lost Out show that I watched where I was like, that show choir. Like, yes. cause I, all those debates, you know, like traditional shows and musical shows, I was like, this is the first time where I felt like Lost Out performed a show choir show. Yeah. Despite all the theatrics and everything, I was like, yeah. this is an amazing show. So. That's kind of like what I thought about Lost Out kind of, on prelims. Touching on the point of the, of the like, director coming out, I was sitting near some, um, behind me was some older ladies from uh, Mitchell. And they like when I, so I was only there for mixed prelims and then all the finals. So after soundtracks were working in finals, um, which I also really enjoyed that show, um, they like leaned up to me and they were like, so is their director like, do people still do that? Because they were like in show choir in the, I don't, they didn't want to say the age, but I'm going to probably guess like in the 80s or so. Um, like they're like, that used to be a thing all the time, but like now we've never, we never see directors get out there on stage and conduct during the ballot. Um, and they're like, is that still allowed? And things like that. And I was telling them like, that it's literally like some competitions have it in their rules. I know Carol, um, this year their director comes out for their acapella ballad. Um, so I think it's, I, don't, I wonder if like that's something that we'll see kind of either continue to move more east or if it's like this really only a California thing because of their acapella requirements. Yeah, Ethan, you're the one with all the show choir stories you want to pitch in. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've never seen a, a Cali group with no someone come out and direct and it's kind of funny because i've always kind of held that against them which is funny to so to say but you know uh you always look at it and you're always like well someone's directing them it's got to be a little bit easier and i grew up or i was able to be so fortunate to be in a time of jeff Gimar at glenwood titan fever where he was just a master of ballads and how acapella they were and how you wouldn't hear anything from the combo at all and it would just be one head goes up in the front row, and that was your opening mark, and how they just went off it. And I always kind of thought, well, it's like, well, if they're doing that, that's got to be better than the Lost Owl. Lost Owl's Burbank Jump Burrows, because they don't have anyone directing them. You don't see anyone out here directing them. And, and um, I know 
Cali schools also have a bigger staff than most Midwest schools. So it kind of enables them to do that and have one person specifically tune into that. Um, so yeah, not to see it, it was, I was just really surprised by it. Um, was there anything else that you guys saw during their show that surprised you completely or anything different? Um, the backflip, the assistant backflip to all the way up into like a partner stunt down to the ground at the very end of the show. Like, yeah. 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 I was. I was gonna say just the way they dance is nothing like I've ever seen live before in a show choir show. It was weird because on the one hand, the MC reads the choreographer, and it's April James, and you know, at at some point, man, I don't have very many show choir stories, but I've at least seen an April James show or two in my life. And clearly I was not seeing the right April James shows because, boy, I mean, I just, their closer was just like an out-of-body experience. Like, the, the way and the precision with which those kids moved, I know that, that there are groups that dance very, very well, and most of was one of them, but, but I, I just really enjoyed seeing it. Yeah. Uh, some I, I want to add to that really fast is I had one of my buddies who was I was in uh, Swing Stations with and we're like, so are you going to admit that April James is better than Dwight? And I was like, I was like, God, you, you're, you're trying to put me in the toughest spot ever. And I was like, I'll never do that. I am too loyal. Um, I think they're both really good in their own right. And I think that if you put them in their own choirs, that they, they're fantastic. I, I I wish I was able to go to an SEA performance where they both like performed because during SEA all the choreographers uh, perform and even some of the directors and I know some of those are super cool to see and how they have their own touches on them. But yeah, yeah. that's my little story with how, how amazing April James was with Los Al. Yeah, like I, I've been trying to get to SEA for quite a while and just be a counselor, but see how that goes. But we even have like I think Rose City uses April James, um, and like their choreography this year was really good. I mean, they definitely, they, if I'm not mistaken, they beat Finley and Solon. So like, I know that they, so, like her choreography is good. Like, people would ex- expect that, but to then come and compare Los Alts and Rose City and say that they have the same choreographer, it's just like a completely different style, a completely different like, technique. It's just like literally a whole brand new different image. It works really, really well. I, I see why they have had best choreography for as long as they have, up until literally their last couple. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's just kind of fact. I don't really think that you can dispute that a lot. Ethan, do you have any other questions for Michael? Um, yeah, so, I mean, you were there for the longest time. Um, if you had to give a few shout outs to a few more groups that you saw that didn't make finals. Uh, who did you, who do you want to give special shout outs to, do you think? Um, I would definitely say uh, Lincoln Southwest. I loved the Chicken Little show. And I think I kind of went like, sitting next to her mom and dad, like got bought in and just like really was like, oh, I'm really rooting for them now. Um, I'm trying to think. Although it wasn't like, like the, you know, not old school Wabonzi Valley, but I actually really liked their show and I liked their choreography. I, me being a choreographer, you know, obviously paying mm-hmm. attention to a lot of dance. And I just really, really liked all of those kids were really, really committed to dancing and acting and playing that part. So I think those two are my like favorite standout of the groups that were left out for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Ethan and I are glad that you're traveling safely. We yes. haven't heard any crap noises in the background. So <laughs> uh, I, I guess continue on your safe travels. Uh, a very happy birthday yes. from happy both birthday. of us. And have a great evening. Thank you very much. You guys too. All right. All right. Thank you. That was Michael McHarg. He was in my 3.30 a.m. selfie at 3.30 on Sunday oh. morning after my So it was... It was me, him, and my friend Ian Bauer, and, and that will go down as an, an incredibly iconic selfie. Ian, will. you got anybody else waiting to get in right now? Uh, not right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, do we want to start going down some of the placements just to get them out of the way? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're 45 them. minutes in, and, and we still haven't, haven't talked about them. We just assume um, everyone knows what happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 
Hey, we we just got we got to get over it at a certain mm. point in time. Do you just want to do you want to start at uh, single gender and then go up from there? Yeah. Uh, so single gender finals is that, is that what we want to do? Sure. Yeah, we can talk about that. All right. So supposed to be originally three finalists for a single gender, but uh, because of a scoring error that we ended up having four added to that late night, of course. Um, so from the bottom, we had Mount Zion Les Femmes take choreography at the four spot for single gender. Uh, so great show by them with their Barbie theme. Los Alamitos with their Emily in Paris show. I thought their costumes were maybe some of the best costumes I've ever seen. I mean, just down to the, to the T, little side note up there. Uh, they were in third place with Best Soloist, who she was amazing. Shout out to Samantha Gonzalez. Uh, second was Center Grove Deb Tones, who I thought they had an amazing show. Eve, um, they always seem to knock out the whole whole arena with their sound, and they always put on a great shows. Um, and then Zionsville topped the cake with Best Vocals, the Coraliers. So any thoughts on those placements? You know, this – this one was just always going to be a, a super duper interesting one. And uh, I have our comprehensive guide article up and I was just kind <laughs> of reading some of the tidbits and I, I will give our staff credit because most of the things that our staff said was really accurate in terms of La Femme. I think they were described as a sleeper pick for finals in our, our guide article. And I will say, after I watched the entire single gender division, I didn't think that Lafemme would make it. I ultimately had the original three groups in for finals that were the three announced at the single gender awards. And I will say, Lafemme did have a very good visual presentation. So I don't really disagree with anything there. In third place, we had uh, Low South Soundtracks, which... Again, I think that they, they dance differently, and it, it just is what it is. I really enjoyed their show. The foreign language shows are mm -hmm. always a little bit of a risky move because you simply have to be good in those vocal categories like the diction, like the vowels, to be able to pull that off. But, it, I mean, La Salle is a school that can pull that off. And in second, we had Center Grove, and I, I was pretty much ready to call the women's division over after Center Grove went. I didn't see mixed or single gender finals, but in terms of prelims, I thought that Debs was the, the, the class of the field. I will say their Eve show definitely had me thinking about philosophy in the middle of the show, which I don't know if that's the intended effect or not, but uh, I, was, I was thinking about some really big picture things during that show. And the Zionsville Corollaires, I mean, the the vocals were good. They had that deep, rich choral tone that all the indie groups have. The choreography was clean. It was well executed. I, I will just say I, I don't do Taylor Swift. And, <laughs> and so while it was, it was a good show, it, to me personally, it was thoroughly unentertaining. But I'm definitely not the target demographic for that show. So I, I think I'm just going to pass that one off as personal preference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't see any of these groups in finals, so I can't really speak to the, the finals placements per se. But I think ultimately, I think maybe I would have had, I would have had Debs in first and Corlairs in second. But I, as for the, the three and the four, I think that's about where things fell. No, yeah, I think, I think so too. Um, so when the Coralaires came out, and I'm just going to go straight to what you said about Taylor Swift at the end for the closer and all that stuff. I mean, I'm, I have nothing against Taylor Swift, but Taylor Swift and show choir is something you don't usually see. So you either love it or you hate it. And, I mean, it is what it is. But I thought the arrangement of it was super cool, how they got uh, the different harmonies in there. I forgot what the song was specifically, but I remember saying, I was like, well, I'm not the biggest fan of Taylor Swift closer. But I was like, that arrangement was able to get sound off. I thought – they came out and they just had energy. I thought their op that first half of their show was killer, vocally and choreography with the vampire Olivia Rodrigo. Um, I thought that was a great touch and how quick they're able to turn that song around into a show. So congrats to them. Um, everyone else, I that's kind of where I thought it would place out. I mean, I thought Debtones might have had the edge, like you said, over Coraliers. Um, Los Alamitos had really good sound and their choreography was different. Um, but I don't think they got down and dirty compared to some other choirs uh, with their footwork and that kind of stuff on the choreographer uh, scale. But uh, just to announce some of the other choirs, because I think they all deserve some, some praise in their own respect. 
Um, according to showcard.com, Broken Arrow Tiger Mystique was fifth. And then Broken Arrow Freshman Academy Tiger Momentum was set, was seventh. So I don't know it really was sixth, but take those for what you want. But overall, you had Broken Arrow Tiger Mystique, Broken Arrow Tiger Momentum, you had Pleasant Hill Powerhouse, you had, and then you had Wabonzi Valley Residence, you had El Paso High Infinity. Oh, I probably I butchered that, but you know what I mean. Um, Mount Zion, you've got mail, and then you had Pleasant Hill again with their Hilltop Harmony. And so I think all these single gender groups came out to play, and some of them had to go in the way too early morning, and um, some of them had to stick around until the very end. So congratulations to all these groups for you know coming coming ready for the task. And yeah, uh, a, a single gender lineup is a story of its own. I will say I, I walked past the Mount Zion bus or one of the Mount Zion buses on my way to my car at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> And I thought those poor kids, because you're not taking yeah. a coach bus to a competition that's, what, two hours away, two and a half hours away? Yeah, I, almost three. Yeah. Almost three, I guess. I mean, it, it was a school bus. And, I mean, you can sleep on a school bus when you're that tired. But No, uh, you can't. So it, yeah, no, no, you can't. You okay, can't. Who, who am I kidding? No, you can't. <laughs> no, so, you can't. So, Don't lie. Don't lie. Bless, bless the Mount Zion kids for riding, for sticking. I think that was the only regular school bus I saw in the parking lot Probably. on the way back. I think, Ethan, I'm going to flip your favorite question back on you. Who's a group that didn't make finals that you thought did really, really well? Oh, for single gender or just overall? It's for single gender. For single gender? Oh, man. I mean, I wasn't able to see majority of these groups, sadly, because I ended up coming up a little bit late because I was at a prior event. But, I mean, I've seen Wabonzi Valley. I've seen El Paso. I've seen Mount Zion. You've got mail. And I know they just put on amazing performances every time. I know it's your first time seeing You've Got Mail, so you kind of got to experience it for the first time. Um, I, I am so mad that I missed out on Broken Arrow, Tiger Mystique, because they were the next choir in, who I thought they were probably going to be in. Um, and I'm just so mad I missed out on it. Um, Zionsville had buses, too. That's good to know. Um, that's, that's not a, a quick trip, either. So shout out to Zionsville and their bus drivers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wish I got to see more single gender groups, but because of my situation, I wasn't able to. Um, so I'm actually excited to hear your thoughts on the single gender. You know, I just do want to give a shout out to YGM because I saw my first ever men's group on the 2nd of March, and then I saw men's groups number two and three on the 9th of March. So you've got mail. When I saw they had a bachelorette theme, I'm like, there ain't no way. And there was away and they were really fun they had really good numbers on stage i think compared to the other men's groups that i've seen even in like photos i think they have really good numbers mm -hmm. and for what they had i thought they did it really well they had a, a really nice kind of light poppy tone which is what you're going for with it with a show based around a reality tv show and uh, always enjoy a good sam mulligan choreography show I, it just was not the same level of complexity and difficulty as those top three, top four shows were. And I think ultimately when you're going for final spots at an event this deep, I think that's kind of what you need is that you need a mix of execution and difficulty. And that's not a knock on no. them. I mean, the kids get what they get at the beginning of the year, right? Like you're not going to write in harmony lines to every song a week before the comp. That was also, a group where you could tell that everybody was super committed and i commend them for two reasons number one with men's groups that is super hard to get usually you have at least three or four people who are dancing in the back corner who you can tell that either they're zoning out or they're still figuring out the whole show mm -hmm. choir thing and number two there were some groups that went on earlier in the morning that you can you saw that some of those kids didn't really want to be on that stage you saw that some <laughs> of those kids were just doing it to do it and then they were they were done performing for the day and they were chilling but you've got mail. They they came out and they they sold that show. And whoever that suitor was that they showed all the baby pics of on the screen. Usually I hate screens. That was, that was a phenomenal use of screens. <laughs> but just for thirty seconds, I still hated it for the rest of the show. And uh, it it was it was a really fun show all around. So I I would have to give my non finals rose to you've got mail. Yeah, and uh, just one last thing for all single gender. There's so many doubles. And all of these, Mount Zion, all their guys are, are a part of swing stations. I know for Lift Them, majority of them are in uh, swing stations as well. And I know that same goes for a, a few of these groups. So, cats off to a long day. 
if your groups made finals or if they didn't because i mean it's long no matter what so and again sharing the stage with this competition that was always one of my biggest things when you go to a national competition you're like we get to share the stage with this group that's unbelievable we all get the same opportunity to perform on this stage um so yeah congratulations to all the single gender groups you want to do mixed place mixed placements yeah we can uh, we can run through these mixed placements here Ooh. in fourth place with best band we've got mitchell friend to q in third place, Zionsville Royal Airs. In second place, with best choreography, Los Alamitos Sound Effects. And in first place, with best vocals, CG Sound System. I did not watch a ton of shows during the Mixed Division prelim. So, Ethan, I'll give you first crack on the groups that made finals. Should they have been the groups that made finals? So, so these groups all deserve to make finals and then some. I mean... Wow. First off, the gym was packed from whatever time they, from whatever time, uh, the little quote unquote lunch break or whatever little judges break they had before La Salle, um, to the end of Mitchell, the whole place was just packed to the brim. Um, I think I'm just going to just go off memory here. Um, La Salle went before, uh, actually Zionsville went first. So Zionsville came out and they did their, uh, old love theme with their with their grandparents and they show love and it was just so much fun um but even after the show i mean it's so crazy to think i thought they were on the bubble i thought zionsville was a group that was on the bubble um but again they had a fantastic show i thought their vocals were really strong i just thought that with, there's so many vocally talented groups here that maybe the judges would get tired of the same old thing i don't know where my head head was going at that point but of course, on a long day, seeing all the group, all these fantastic groups, um, I thought their show was fantastic, and I went back to their young love after their grandparent love. So it was super cool to see. Um, they deserve that third spot, I believe. Um, and then went Los Al, and of course, we talked about them a little bit ago. They literally just knocked the house down. I mean, it was you came up to me afterwards, and you were like, "So where does that rank on your top shows?" And I was like, "Live." I was jokingly said live and I mean it was one of the top shows I've ever seen and I was like I don't know how that gets beat and in prelims I don't think it was beat I think they had ones across the board from what that I is heard correct. Uh, yeah so and I mean that's kind of how I saw it and then you got Mount Zion in between my my alma mater and then you had Cinder Grove come out which shout out Mount Zion's presentation because that's so tough to be sandwiched in between those two groups and it is what it is someone had to be it but uh, Center Grove came out and they just blew you away. I think I've seen enough Center Grove shows to say that this show was different. Um, it had a little, it had its own little tweak to it where it was like, yes, Center Grove always comes out with these powerful vocals and it comes off a little intimidating at times. But again, like they had so much fun with it when they started going down the line. So if you don't know, the show is about a royalty in England. And so as it went down the line, the show kind of got funnier and funnier and the, like it got loosened up a little bit. Um, and I thought that was super cool to see. And but going into finals, I thought they were in the second spot and they were, despite their vocals being as good as they were, because I thought the showmanship from Los Alamitos was off the roof, like amazing. So just a little tab bit of where I was going into finals, I had my spots for because. I'm going to say them now because if I don't, when am I? I had Los Alamitos, Center Grove, and then I had actually had Lincoln Southwest, which me and the judges did not agree on that, apparently. But I thought Lincoln Southwest came out and destroyed it. They had a fun show. We talked about it a little bit ago. And I thought their soloist, I believe her name is Aubrey. I don't want to butcher the last name for reasons because I don't want to, I want to do her justice. But she came out and she was a fantastic performer. Um, the show was just so much fun. Um, other groups that didn't get in, um, Broken Arrow, they had an amazing show. They were one of the only shows that left me like, what did I just watch? It was so good. I was like, I don't know how the judges are going to, how they're going to place this. It was because it was like, it's so uniquely different from everything else they watched on the show. There was no costume changes. It was just straight on choreography fun and their vocals brought it their showmanship was amazing um yeah and then uh mitchell friend i thought that 
I said, yeah, Mitchell from Deku. I was like, so I know I had to say it twice because I had to make sure I got it right. So I was like, it was either them or Zionsville for the final spot for me. And I thought it was Mitchell's spot to have. And they came out and they lit, had the most fun show. I don't even know if that's a right sentence or not. But they had so much fun in their show. I, I just sat back and I was smiling ear to ear the whole time. During Los Alamitos, my jaw was on the floor. And on Center Grove, I was like just intently just watching because I was like, how, how better can their vocals get? And Zionsville, I was like, this old person show is something I've never seen before. And I was questioning it a little bit, but they came out and blew, blew me away. I know I'm rambling, but I mean, in a competition where you had so many good groups, it deserves a decent little ramble every now and then. Also, Mitchell, best band, their band blew me away. And I almost got knocked out by a popcorn ball. I did. I swear. I didn't. I, I heard rumors that they gave popcorn balls away, like before the show. And when they came out and they did it, I was not expecting it. And one just zoomed right over my head. I thought I was going to get knocked out. But um, fantastic showing by all, all those groups. I, it, you can't say none of them deserve to be in finals because there are a list of eight groups, I think, that deserve to be in finals. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the part where <laughs> if we had a definitive prelims placing order, I think this gets a lot more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, working with what we got right now, and that's okay. Frankly, I'm shocked that we made it this long without prelim placements, but that's that's okay. I'm go going to be very real with you here. I like it. I had Zionsville under both Lincoln Southwest and Broken Arrow. I was pretty shocked to hear that Zionsville made finals. So you and I were kind of in the same boat, being on the fence. Yeah. And and I did not see Center Grove, but I knew that they were as good of a bet as anybody to make finals. And I didn't see Mitchell, but I, I had that gut feeling going into it that you did. You called Mitchell, it. Mitchell was getting hot at the right time. They they got hot at Davenport Central, and they kept it going. So I was a little bit shocked to see Zionsville in finals. I'm not going to lie. I will say I, I saw Lincoln Southwest's Lizard, Wizard of Oz show last year. Not Lizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz show <laughs> last year. All good. That, that would have been a crazy show, the Lizard of Oz. <laughs> but anyways. That, that, we, we're not even going to go there. Jake I saw credit. that Home show. And, Joe Choir gets credit for L Lizard of Oz. Make sure you put that in the description before yes. the show. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we, we both are available for freelance work as show yeah. consultants. And I, I saw the Wizard of Oz show last year. And that looks generally kind of like something that I would see on stage in Wisconsin. Uh, this this Chicken Little show, uh, I I ain't seeing a show of that caliber in my home state. With all due respect to my fabulous Wisconsin choirs, I'm like this is this is kind of why I traveled out of state for this competition. Aubrey Falter finishes the season four of five on Best Female Soloist Awards, so a huge shout out to her. And that was the only caption award that went to a group in the varsity division outside of finals. I I do kind of like that. There's no like. Best crew, best costumes, people. Yes, like they're, they're trying to. The the award ceremonies consistently like bang, bang, bang. Like here's the one award A. Like, I was like, did that just happen? I was like, are we done? Yeah. Like everyone was like, wait, that's it? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Let's, um, go. let's get out of here. And I was. There weren't even participation trophies, and I respect the heck out of that because <laughs> if you sign up to go to the Wheaton Warrenville South Coral Classic, you don't need a participation trophy. Um, regardless of that, I did find it interesting that uh, Eli Vondelingen from Center Grove won Best Male Soloist Award. Uh, we were kind of pulling leaders in the clubhouse before the competition with people who had maybe gotten a couple so far this season. And he had gotten none so far this season. So I don't think he was on anybody's radar, but no. huge congratulations to him. All I'm gonna say is that I'm glad I wasn't on the panel during finals, uh, mainly because, uh, get Nathan on here so he can say the yeah, name. Yeah, I right. know, I'll, I was gonna let you finish up. Okay, and <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Belgian. I'm not Dutch. I'm sorry, and I'm pretty sure that's a Dutch name. And I, I'm grateful I wasn't on the panel number one because my brain was just so mush. Mixed final started at roughly eleven fifty five p.m. I, I was in no condition to make qualified remarks about shows by that point. And number two, I think that even if I was, the shows that I saw in prelims were so close that I still would just not have wanted to be on the table. And and so uh, I I know that everybody has opinions about how things went down. I think I'm the only single person who was in that gym for mixed finals 
and does not have an opinion about how things went down. <laughs> I watched finals as a show choir fan. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to see four phenomenal shows. These are four yeah. groups that are all located hundreds of miles away from where I live. And I'm just going to have fun watching them and not nitpick them and say, ooh, in song number three at 37 seconds, the performer <laughs> dancing on the far back left box did not have a blade that was as sharp as the rest of them. Like I said, no, I said, I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah. You know, so I, I don't have an opinion on how things went out. I'm usually the opinion guy, but I, yeah. I have no opinions. I mean, I, you said this a couple of weeks ago where you watched a show and you were like, I don't know how something beats that. And I, in prelims, that's what Lost Out was. And then Cinder Grove came out and I was like, okay, I can see how something might beat that. And it, it's someone perfectly said on showquire.com in the comment section where it was like, you had two perfect shows but one has to win. Like one yeah. has to win. So you can't even look into it that deep. Of course, it's an amazing win for Center Grove, and we'll get Nathan on here and talk about it a little bit. But I'm just going to go down the, the list of everyone else that performed for Mixed so they can get their own shine as well. So we had Watsika Sensations. We had Lincoln Southwest Ambient, Ambience. Yes, and that was their prep group, I believe. Uh, Twin Lakes Sound Wave. Uh, Pleasant Hill, Hill Sound, which I saw the end of their show, and I thought they were phenomenal. Um, Wabonzi Valley Soundcheck, they always have great shows. Uh, Michael was talking about how he liked their show a little bit ago. El Paso Modulations, I heard someone say that, whoa, that was the best group in Illinois after that show. So they came out and killed it. Vocals were super strong, I heard. Um, I was so sad I missed that one. Uh, Pleasant Hill Hillside Sceners, fantastic show as well. Uh, Lincoln Southwest, who didn't make finals, had an amazing show, according to Will and I, who are not judges and didn't agree with the judges. But, and I'll be all, that's not our place as show choir enthusiasts. Lincoln Southwest had a killer show, as well as Broken Arrow, Tiger Rhythm. They had a fantastic toy box show. And also, I don't know if you caught this in prelims, but I, I just want to say something really fast. They had like a pre-show before the show. Like, so when the judges were setting up, they had a girl toy box with her toys and it was kind of weird so she starts playing with the toys while the dads are still setting up the stage and like as she would play with a toy that toy would walk out on stage and do the same motions as the girl who was playing with the doll was so you walk out and then you had the rag doll walk out and as soon as she was done playing with it it just like fell to the floor like just dropped or like you would come out and the soldier would come out and they would stay in this uh, salute position and cowboy. And um, I believe there's a baseball player and it goes on and on and on and on. And it was kind of, it was super weird because they stood there for, it felt like 12 minutes because the stage wasn't set. The combo wasn't set. So they stood there in their right positions until the MC said something. And then they all walked out. And I was like, I don't know how you kept those poses. I'm sidetracking, but. I thought that was just a cool, cool little tad bit of Broken Arrow show that might go unnoticed. Um, and then you had our, then you had finalist Zionsville Royal Lairs, finalist Los Alamitos Sound FX, Mount Zion Sound or Swing Stations. It was the best performance of the year. But of course, when you go up against killer groups like this, you know it happens. You know, I thought their choreography was was on point. I think it was completely different from a, from a lot of the groups. Um, a lot more feet, I think, than the majority of the groups. A lot of other groups use a lot of arms, but they're all on point. Um, they're on the outside looking at the finals, but, you know, I always thought there was a chance because crazier things have happened. Mountain Science Twin Stations has two comps left, surprisingly, so they still have two more shots and their season on the right note. Um, then you end up with uh, Center Grove, who won it all, and then Mitchell Friend Deku, who had an amazing show, and it might be one of my shows of the year. So do we... Do you have anything to say? Uh, you can bring on whoever wants to come yeah. in because so... I can tell you're getting to someone. But uh, just real quick, I, I had no idea what was going on with Broken Arrow pre-show. I was actually catching up with a guy that I have known for years and years, and he actually wound up winning the showquire.com prediction game. So shout out Dylan because I wound up sitting next to the best predictor for one show during prelims, and then also we somehow found each other during finals again. And so – I don't know if he was there until the very, very end, but I, yeah, I had no idea what was going on with Broken Arrow. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh this is yeah, black it's getting on. busy. It's getting busy. Oh, oh dear. Okay, so uh, I guess first question to our guests who need no introduction is: 
If I if I butchered the name, how do I say the name? Oh, it's Eli Von Dilligan. But he also just goes by Vondi probably because it's so difficult yeah. to say. Okay. I, yeah, I think I was just putting my emphasis on the wrong syllable. And there. he's the second song soloist. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. That's him. All right. Yep. So I, I guess uh, next question now that we got the trivial stuff out of the way. How big of an ego boost is this to both of you, seeing as how Center Grove won the competition in mixed, Zionsville third in mixed, and Indianapolis groups top two in the women's? How how have your egos been doing, I guess, both of you since this competition? I mean, we we didn't do anything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, but... You, you know, it, it's got to feel good being from yeah. Minneapolis and seeing your groups consistently do so well. I mean, yeah. I don't think anybody really had a ton of expectations for Twin Lakes, bless their hearts. But as for the other four groups that people expected to be in the mix, four for four on finals, none of them lower than third. I would say it's not like boosting our ego. I would just say I'm proud of their performance at um, at a national event. I'm not surprised. They always they always come to play both Zionsville and Center Grove. And like uh, we both watched Zionsville at Plainfield, their very first performance in prelims. And then we watched their final performance or final performances. And they've improved so much throughout the season. Uh, both groups uh, were incredible uh, the past weekend. I think one of the things we haven't been talking about uh, and we've kind of been glancing over a little bit too much is just how late finals was. So Zionsville was performing at 3 a.m. Uh, Indiana time. Uh, mm-hmm. And like I was talking to some of the Zionsville people and they were like, well, our prelims was our best run of the year. And then finals, yeah, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> we're tired. <laughs> we're just going on stage. But the biggest thing is that they were just having fun. And I think that's a big thing with the Zionsville show, with the Zionsville people all around. They just love to have fun. You can see it on stage. They they have amazing characters. Um, uh, talk about the Royal Lairs, uh, of course. They were the one that, that performed at 3 a.m. But the Coral Lairs also did uh, really well earlier in the night. There we go. I think, Will, I'm going to toss this one to you because – Everybody that we've had on so far tonight was there in person. You were watching on the live stream. Mm -hmm. I guess taking into account what everyone else has said being there in person, do you have any opinions that differ substantially from watching the live stream? So um, I would think part of it was I was kind of in a weird spot. So I was able to watch some of the day shows. Um, and then a little bit, I was on, um, I was on a trip. I got to go to the New York city met. And so I was taking that opportunity and, um, and so I was, um, but watching kind of as I was able to watch and I was on a bus and I kind of, and I texted Nathan, I was like, I see Lincoln Southwest as a finals group. And I said, I, I see where they were. And kind of when we got the finals announcement, I was, I, I kind of said to him, I said, the likelihood that Mitchell is a fantastic group they're going to have the upper hand because they're going last and that's just kind of how it is i think they were great i think anyone getting to the finals one through six good luck i said there's only two groups that are safe today and after that have fun um i really think this just kind of shows indy um zionsville or cg is our one ranked group but even then they were not impervious they got best choreo taken from them by carmel and carmel had best choreo taken from them by North Central, FC has been just won HOA um, Nashville, so congrats to them. And then Zionsville was right up there with the big dogs. It really just shows kind of, um, we talk about kind of an indie and we're like very proud of how strong our type five are. And um, I think it was just great for that to kind of be um, proved and kind of show, hey, uh, we know we talk about it a lot, but this is a great example for us to show. That's fair. That's very fair. Ethan, what questions do you got for these dudes? Well, well, I feel like there's so many questions or so many things to be said about uh, Indianapolis at this competition. Well, first off, Mm -hmm. yes, you should be proud. I mean, state pride is a a huge thing, especially at a competition like this where people are from all over. Uh, So I guess congratulations on your pride being lifted a little bit. Um, But one thing I do want to say is how surprised were you when Zionsville was announced over Center Grove? 
in their first meeting together despite being only a few miles away. I will say I was quite surprised with the uh, Corlaire's win. Uh, a lot of things did not uh, go well for Corlaire's as reviewing the finals footage and one of their screens yes. was flipped yes. in the first song uh, and that was kind of weird. And then they also had the very early entrance and the closer. Uh, they've had some prop issues as well uh, in the finals run, but I think that was granted for everyone uh, because uh, like yeah, everyone was dealing with how late the competition was running. Um, so I think they overcame that. I think a big part of their win, obviously, of course, was their vocal wow. uh, presence that is significantly improved throughout the year. And wow. I definitely think that was one of their better vocal performances that we have seen this year from Zionsville. Um, and then their choreo has improved steadily, not as good as like Mount Zion or I think Center Grove may have beat them in choreo. I would have been close. Um, and I think it's ultimately down to what the judges preferred. Mm -hmm. I think they preferred Zionsville's choral tone over Center Grove's choral tone, which is interesting since Center Grove took choral tone in, or I think they preferred Center Grove's choral tone, at least in finals over Los Sal's in the mixed. So it's kind of interesting to see how maybe they prefer a certain type of choral tone for one group versus the other. Or Will, do you have any, one division? Uh, anything? Yeah. Will, do you have anything to say from an outside perspective? I mean, it was very interesting. I would say that we've, we've been watching Zionsville, and they are always a very strong group. Um, I've talked with some of the people that were members of kind of their program, and the way they work is a little different than even most indie groups work. It's very student-led. Really? Um, they're very much a focus on cleaning and dancing. Vocals are... Um, from what I understand, they literally, like, the students are section captains, and that's how they teach to each other, and it's just, and so kind of that development, obviously, if you don't have that teacher spending a ton of time, that's going to take a little bit more time, um, so I think that build was really interesting. It was, um, I will say, Zionsville had faced stronger women's groups than they had um, mixed groups all year, so, I mean, obviously, we were a bit surprised. I, I would love to see the scoring sheets to really get a deeper look into it. I thought Deb's was fantastic. I thought Zionsville was fantastic. And when you have two fantastic performances that late at night, someone wins. You call it a day, you don't ask as many questions as you might at other times. Yeah, I think overall it was incredibly close between those two groups. I Like I said, or like you said, I think I would have loved to see the scoring sheets, the scoring breakdown on that. Uh, but yeah, I think both ballads almost made me cry. They're very, uh, just amazing ballads from both groups. Um, and yeah, ultimately, just like the mix we were talking about is you kind of have to pick a winner. They both threw their hearts out in that performance. They were going at like 9, 10 PM. You have like only 400, 500 people there because all the mixed people are trying to rest uh, for their own finals. And you just have the parents that are left of the remaining groups. So I think they did an amazing job to awesome. take whatever energy they had left in that environment and take that to win. Uh, but yeah, both groups performed. And, uh, proud of both of them, though. Indianapolis, top two. And I think that's a big thing. We have some of the best single gender groups in the country and just proves it once again. Yeah, Nathan, I guess I will toss this one to you. Because you were there, I think you watched most of the mixed division, right? Like you only missed a couple groups. Yep. Pleasant Hill and then onward. Okay. So what was a group that you had never seen before that really impressed you? One that really impressed me, especially hearing their story after the fact, was El Paso okay. Gridley. Apparently their okay. was student population of only like 400. That is correct, yeah. yeah. Like 400. They have a bunch of doublers, right. people that are like performing very early in the morning. And then they've actually filled out my form. They talked about like a lot of them got naps, got rests in between, and then came back, which was crazy because the amount of energy that they had and brought at like 3 or 4 p.m. after performing like six, seven hours earlier was insane. I think they're one of the most fun groups to watch overall. They hit everything clean. I love well, their uh, well, vocal right. presence. Obviously, maybe oh. not up to the standard of the top groups, uh, but I think uh, yeah. as an Illinois group, 
as one that's that small, they uh, certainly yeah. impressed me. And I think another one that impressed me, huh? they weren't competing, but was Wheaton wow. Warrenville uh, South, the classics as well. Yeah, a, Such a creative, fun like. show. And we have people from I Wheaton Warrenville really South, was cool uh, watching them perform. Um, and just, I love their um, props, the, uh, the spears. You were talking about, I think you were talking about a spear with like a blade with the arm, but they had physical spears and that was really fun. And I think uh, that they, really, that was that very really clean like, as well. Um, really and they definitely, we were, I was thinking when I was looking at the predict or uh, the yeah, rankings of Illinois, yeah. oh yeah, we have two WWS people. Of course, WWS is gonna be top of the rankings, but no, I think they deserve that title after watching several of the top Illinois groups. I think they definitely proved that they deserve to be top of Illinois. Yeah, hey, I hold some weight in there too. I mean, what do you, what do you, you, you think? You think I'm just gonna be biased to them? No, man, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, like you said, they had a fantastic show. I actually got to see it twice during the competition, and I thought they brought it during prelims on Saturday. After prelims on Saturday, it was better than it was. Our contributor Owen does a fantastic job on the mic and in his role. Um, him in the fetal position is awesome. It's so funny. Um, also, the female soloists can absolutely wail. Uh, the show choir judge, so to say. Um, it's such a unique show, like you said. It's completely different from anything I've ever seen before. And like the show choir dream landscape type thing, stealing ideas. So uh, big shout out to Chris Miller on that. And of course, running a competition this big. Will, do you have any more questions? Well, I, I don't have any more questions, but I just want to go off that real quick. I miss the classics and I will be watching a video of them. I have not watched a single video of a show choir all year, but I think the classics is one that I will yeah. have to be watching. I, but I, I did see a spree at the end of the single gender division. And I think that that was unironically one of the most fun shows that I've seen all year. They did a What's Her Name show, which, mm -hmm. like, we've all been there. We're at a party. We're at a show choir competition. You meet somebody, <laughs> and then, like, you move away from them. And you're like, crap, like, I, I had so much fun talking to this person, but, like, I have no idea what, what their name was. <laughs> and so they ran through like all the songs with names and the titles and things like that. And I'm gonna be real, I have seen shows this year that have been over the top that have just been like, okay, that was kind of ridiculous how much, how much prop usage there was and how very bluntly you hit me over the head with this show theme. The name theme was just so fun and it wasn't the thing that put it over the top for me is that it was not just a set about names they didn't just sing you know songs with names in the titles it wasn't just sweet caroline and mickey mm -hmm. and all that other stuff it followed the plot line of meeting somebody forgetting their name and then reconnecting with them at the end and so that kind of multi-layered storytelling i was pretty much on the edge of my seat uh that entire time my neck still hurts from being on the edge of my seat too much on saturday but i uh, yeah. common common show choir bleacher problem but yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's pretty much all the questions I have for the cool. Uh yeah, uh two more things I wanna ask. Uh for Nathan, just a little thing is for some people who saw it, um, or might be questioning it. So Center Grove didn't stick around the competition for majority of it. Again, it's a long day, people understand that. But give some insight to what they might have been doing uh when they're away from the competition. Yeah. Their hair. <laughs> yeah, I, of course. <laughs> yes, that's a good question. Actually, there were two groups that actually left the competition midday, and they were the ones on top, LaSalle and Center Grove. They knew when they were coming to this event that this is going to be a Nationals event. They are probably going to be performing late. It was already scheduled the furthest, um, uh, well, the originally scheduled final, final time was 1230. Ended up going way later than that but it was intended the whole time uh, to be nap time, as Landon Hoover says, uh, <laughs> assistant dance captain of Center Grove Sound System in the house. Um, uh, as a nap time to get some rest, um, Deb Tone said as well, after performing uh, their prelims, that also helped them boosted uh, their finals performance as well. You def <laughs> they definitely needed those naps. I think pretty much everyone that's filled out the form has said they found some time to nap even if they didn't even make up finals, it was just an exhausting day all around. Just watching, show. so I'm glad. And I think that definitely helped boost them. So getting mm -hmm. away from the environment, 
Um, it also cements the fact that it is in a nationals event. Usually at a nationals event, you might have a hotel that you go back to and stay for a little bit in between. You don't stay at the school like you would normally in an Indianapolis competition. So I think that also cemented that fact that, oh, we have come to play. We have come to take down LaSalle. Um, and I think, yeah, certainly helped as I think Landon yeah. would attest to. <laughs> Well, shout out for Landon for being in here and congratulations on the win, of course. Choreography was amazing. So I know you have some to do with that, of course. So congratulations to you. Um, to Will, and I guess, Nathan, you can answer this after. Uh, so where does Indy go from here? We're on the mountaintop, so it seems, of this season. Where do you go? Oh, yeah. So now we so, – Oh, uh, yeah, Will. So, um, so we've got still some great opportunities. So next week we have um, – the um, Noblesville um, show choir competition where our two national winners from this week will meet again, FC and CG. And if FC pulls off an um, upset, then me and Nathan's lives will become eternally more difficult. Um, <laughs> and we don't know what we're going to do at that point. Carmel went four for five. They're still utterly fantastic. North Central is going to go out to Marysville in a week and gets to face some of the some great Ohio groups. So that's another national opportunity for them to prove. And I will tell you, as someone who's been with um, North Central at a national comp last year at nationals, it's a different breed. Like waking up, we, we go to work when we're out there. Zionsville is done for the year. And then we have Isma State, which, well, it's a lighter competition this year, is still sort of a fun looking at nine Indiana groups. Um, Indy in general, um, we just really, the, where we go from here sort of into this year and into next year is uh, we would just love, at least for me and Nathan, we've talked about it a little bit. We would love to have um, another or an opportunity for groups like Linmar, for Attaché, for um, the best groups in the country. Like I know Indiana um, indie competitions are just so stacked. It's tough. Like you don't, I'm not sure you want to come in to, like, I don't know if I would want to come into such a stack, but we would just love to, to welcome those people into the wonder that is um, Indy comps. And I know I love it. I love everything about it. And I'm just really looking forward to hopefully some of those matchups in the next coming years to continue to prove how good Indy is along with the other just wonderful um, circuits that exist out there. Yeah. I would uh, have to agree with all of that. I would love to see more national groups go to Indy, like we saw with Wheaton Warrenville South, uh, not to, um, bash WWS. They ran a fantastic competition considering like all of this coming into the competition that you would have to deal with, take in, welcome. Uh, I still thought they did an incredible job considering just the amount of props and stuff. Uh, but Indy, Indiana knows how to run a comp. We have these massive auditoriums that are bigger than uh, what Wheaton Warrenville South had, and I would love to see some more national groups. We could fit more people into those auditoriums to see these amazing groups. So I would love to see, like you said, Clinton, Lenmar, maybe even a California group uh, would be amazing. Uh, but for the uh, end of this year as well, you mentioned next week, but we can also look ahead. Uh, we'll have a live later talking about it, but Show Choir Nationals will have three different indie schools at that one. Cinegrove will obviously be the favorite uh, pretty much for both divisions. Uh, we'll see. I'm very excited to see the Muses uh, perform from Oak Mountain um, in the women's division. Uh, but you also have Brownsburg that will be competing and Noblesville. And I'm really excited to see like where do they scale on the uh, national side of things uh, because there is maybe not as stacked as Wheaton Warmville South, but definitely some of the uh, better national groups overall. And then, like you said, this next week we have NC going to Marysville. They'll be facing uh, a strong uh, Southern group, I know, but I'm confident North Central could pull that out. You obviously have the FCCG battle uh, in actually both divisions. We'll see if High Voltage could beat the Debtones. The Debtones have only won two of their four competitions this year, and High Voltage is coming off a win beating uh, Tupelo Synergy in uh, the treble division, uh, which was an impressive result. Uh, so that one should also be competitive. And yeah, Isma, a little bit lighter this year. Fisher Sound will demolish the competition on the Univoy side. It is a little unfair for indie groups uh, with just how good Sound is this year. Um, mm -hmm. 
we have them as like number one in the country right now. Nobody can uh, match them in the Univoice division. And then on the mixed side, I think it will be close between Plainfield, Fishers, Brown, uh, Brownsburg's not going. Uh, Plainfield and Fishers, I think. Plainfield it, it, and Fishers are the, the main two that'll be close with. So it'll be interesting to see which one of those two take the results. And then I also want to see, because like you said, there'll be nine groups performing. How will that uh, scale down? Who will have those impressive results that were like, yeah, that'll be a group on the come up. I can see Lawrence North being one of those groups. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be exciting uh, final two weeks in the new competition. Yeah. Well, will Isma do something so super weird? It's Isma. You never know. That's the best <laughs> part about it. It is genuinely the only competition where I could tell you a group that has never won before can win on Isma weekend. Isma's weird. It is what it is. And we... Um, and we've all got the wonderful chance to experience it in, here in Indiana. Yeah, uh, going off of what you said earlier, Will, as someone who's been to multiple Indian, Indi or Indiana competitions, and especially in Indiana, and having to like step into that ring, it, it's intimidating. But again, I've had so much fun competing against so many great groups, and it's something I'll never forget. Because if you don't go up against them, it's like, if you got to run the gauntlet, you know? And, and Indy is always a great gauntlet. So thank you guys for coming on. Will, do you have anything else to say? Nope, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say respect to the swings coming in. I, I know you beat us in uh, 2020, but respect for coming in and being like, yeah, we could take down Center Grove and then come into Center Grove several times as well, where we've had some incredible competitions. Always love to see uh, the swings and also the women's group, La Femme. So many examples of Mount Zion uh, traveling to Indi or Indiana or Indianapolis. I, I remember one national competition, kind of to your point earlier, Will. It was like, it wasn't national, but I believe it was us. It was Loveland. And it was a few other really good uh, Indianapolis choirs in the mix at uh, community, or Franklin's community. I think like 2019. I forgot who was all there. It, it, it might have been Franklin Central or Franklin Franklin. FCOM is another one that the, the problem is indie groups. What happens with us is you either have these cluster comps where everyone goes to the same comp or you have like your top five will all go to different spots. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe like, like the directors call each other at the beginning of the season. They're like, hey, are you going to all these? Hey, are you going to all these <laughs> comps? And they all compare with each other so they all don't um, yeah. kill each other the entire year. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on. It's been a blast. And if Will has nothing else to say, because you guys basically said it all. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for coming on. And uh, either, and I think it's time to perhaps get back to where we started, which was the Wheaton Warrenville South Coral Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think we got just a tad away from that in those last couple of minutes there. It's good discussion, oh, to get me wrong. But uh, the title of this stream, the, the Wheaton Warrenville South recap show. So we've generally gone over what our experiences were. We've generally gone over the, the placing choirs. I think, uh, is, is it time to just kind of round it out with some notes, uh, perhaps about some of the choirs that in place? I've seen a couple comments over these, these past uh, half hour of minutes or so uh, about a couple different groups. And if we've got people from some groups in the chat here, I do want to talk about them a little bit. Mm -hmm. One that I was going to say right before you brought those two on is that El Paso Gridley I think had one of the most standout energetic performances of the mixed division. Like were there vocal and visual moments where you could tell that this choir wasn't going to make finals? Yes. But were there plenty more moments where you could tell that this was definitely a choir that had won three competitions so far this year in three different States? Yes. Yes, it was. So I, I literally ran into the gym right right as El Paso Gridley was going on. Like I'd, I almost let the door hit me on the way in. But uh, it was it was a great show in terms of energy wise. It was the first show that I watched in the mixed division. They immediately set the standard for the rest of the day. We got a comment on swings. I mean, I think we were talking about them a little bit. Ethan, uh, I'll toss this one to you for a little bit because I, I miss swings mm -hmm. during the day. So uh, like mentioned earlier, swings was pinched in a really tough spot between – what many thought were the two uh, obvious finalists in Los Alamitos and Center Grove. Um, and coming in, um, many didn't think that their vocals would match up. I personally thought that they could have enough oomph behind their vocals 
to uh, have their choreography, do all the talking and be completely different from everyone else. Choreography wise, it was on a different level. Um, I don't remember what the scores were for it, but I know they came out and they lit up the show, especially because a lot of people left after La Salle. So they had to create their own energy. They came out on fire. Um, I, I had a friend sit next to me and he was like, I'm kind of scared because I think Sweeney's is going to come out with just so much amped up energy. Um, and sometimes, you know, that dwindles down over the course of a show and you don't finish the way you want to finish. But I thought Sweeney's vocally, they had some really good moments, um, especially in the ballad. I thought the ballad was really good. Um, the soloists were fantastic. I was definitely in their best run to date. They definitely, oh yeah, they have two comps left. Like mentioned earlier, we have Hersher, and I think they go to Waltham for the end of the year trip. I don't know much about Waltham, but if you're going to Waltham, you're going to be going up against some decent um, Northeast groups. And at Hersher, you'll be going up against Chesterton, who had a really good second place finish this past weekend. But Sweens, I am a proud alum. I thought you guys came out and you guys kicked some butt. You guys showed what we were all about. Um, vocally, it wasn't all there compared to some other groups who were super strong. But in a competition like this, you cannot be mad with missing out finals. Um, so congratulations to Sweens, uh, to Le Femme, to You Got Mail, to all the doubles. Um, it was a long day, but you all should be very proud of how you guys did. Awesome. I think one other group that I'd seen comments about was Pleasant Hill. Were you in the gym for Pleasant Hill? I think I barely missed it. I said I saw them earlier, but I think I missed them. I got them confused with um, um, someone else. So I was actually outside the gym, but I could hear their vocals through the live stream waiting outside the gym. And I thought, whoa, they're kind of braiding it right now. Um, I mentioned in the preview show that they're uh, – they're really good at closing their shows. That's the one best closer before in the, earlier in the season. Um, and you could just, the crowd just roaring and you're just waiting and you're like line and you're like, what did I just miss? Because I know the crowd loved it. And I was kind of sad. I wasn't able to see it. Yeah. For me, Pleasant Hill. I mean, it was just a show that kind of got sucked up in the middle of a run of incredible shows. I think this was a little bit of a new look, Pleasant Hill with Karen Dollins retiring and Heather Martin taking over there. Same choreographer as Kevin Chase. Uh, and Kevin Chase does a lot of shows in Wisconsin, and I, I met him. He's a great guy, but uh, it, it was a show that I thought I could have seen in Wisconsin. I will say shout out. Uh, there's an Ole Borud song in there, and I think I'm the only person that listens to Ole Borud outside of a show choir context. You always see his songs <laughs> like Make a Change, Backyard Party, Heaven is on my side. Oh, oh Backyard Party. Yeah, yeah, yep. every Everybody's done Backyard Party at some point, yep. right? And uh, I think I'm the Rock only guy steady. that listens to him Rock and it, his Norwegian heavy metal band Extol outside of a show choir context. So I uh, just shout out that. It was quick thoughts on Pleasant Hill. Other than that, I think we've touched on most everybody. So for one final segment here, Ethan, before we let people go for tonight, I just want to talk about final streaks that got snapped. And so we did a little piece on the final streaks going into this so we had low sal at 70 comps that extends center grove at 55 that extends zionsville at 54 these are all the mixed groups that extends mount zion at 47 that gets snapped so first time since danville 2017 that swings does not make finals lincoln southwest 28 that gets snapped Wheaton warrenville south 2017 last time they missed finals I honestly think with how highly everybody's talking about them, I, I really do think that they were that fifth place group. But I mean, I, I guess unless the score sheets ever make their way out, I think we just kind of have to think that and not know that. Mitchell at 24, that goes to 25. That's probably their toughest test in a while, not counting some kind of HOA comp or fame comp that would only take three. Broken Arrow at 15, that gets snapped. And then Wabonzi and Pleasant Hill both at nine, both snapped and El Paso Gridley at five that gets snapped. So we had we had our top three streaks remain intact and then uh, one of the shorter ones as well. Okay, Lincoln Southwest was sixth. We we now have confirmation. So um, I, I guess that does not line up with what I would say, but also I had them in finals, so it wouldn't line up what I would say. Yeah, um, same. So <laughs> Ethan, any, anything else you want to say on the topic of streaks? So streak. I mean, you mentioned off one of my choirs, and I was able to give something to that streak uh, over the course of my four years. So to see it get snapped, you know, a little part of you as an alumni kind of, you know, 
little like pokes in your heart a little bit. But again, if you look at the competition of this and people look back at this in time, they're going to be like, well, you can't pull, hold anything against them. I know the wild thing happened at, on Alaska 2004, I believe. But you look down that list of all those amazing groups and you're like, well, I can't hold it against them how this happened because there's so many fantastic groups. And I applaud all these groups for even attending a competition like this because so many choirs over time, they have these sort of egos where it's like, well, we, why would we put ourselves in that spot? Because in the national spotlight, if we don't make a certain placement or we don't make finals, it's going to look really bad on us. And we don't want that image. Um, so congrats to all, every choir that showed up here because it just showed that you want to face top groups and you want to be in the middle of it. Um, so to the top choirs that kept the streaks, congratulations. And to the choirs that uh, got their sneaks sna or sneaks streaks snapped, um, it's time to start a new one. I know it's the end of the season and many seasons ended, but you get to start on the start off on the right foot next year. I'm ex I'm excited to see how these choirs do next year and kind of like visualize how this would turn out a year from now. So that's why I think about the streaks. Yeah, there we go. So I think with that, unless you got any. Any final thoughts, Ethan? I think it's finally time to let this one go. Another hour. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's so many things we didn't talk about, but I, you know, I think we're to the point where we're so burnt out that it's time to close this chapter. Um, definitely comp of the year. Um, thank you to everyone again for even letting me through the building and letting me experience something like this in my home state. Um, so I had some home state pride in that too for, uh, used to uh, performing in a competition this previous competition um to see it grow i only think it's like it's it's relatively it's pretty new i think it's not as old as some other competitions so to see it grow up to where it is today is insane um i do want to give i know they get a lot of hate but i do want to shout out to every judge that was there because this is the toughest job in the world in the show choir landscape um, to judge a competition of this extent. So we had Connor C who did Friday night. We had Judy Hansen who did Friday night. Jeff Guimar did both nights. Um, we have Bob Anderson who I believe joined the panel a little bit late, but he was there. Mike Weaver, Lynn Wilder. And of course we had Miss Linda Southard who is an all time judge. Um, That's so you know yeah. you're from and, Illinois is that you called her Miss Linda and then you added Southard on the end. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is the most Illinois thing you've done in a long time. Because if you're outside of Illinois, nobody knows what you're talking about when you say Miss Linda. But if you're in the state of Illinois, and and you say like Miss Linda. That yeah. is that is such an Illinois thing. But <laughs> well, um, so at a competition at a competition like this, you need opinionated judges, or you won't you won't just have a winner. Because if, for example, if it was me and Will up there, we're seeing all these groups for the first time. I think we would have everyone tied for fourth, fourth place. So, um, yes, uh, shout out to the judges for doing an event like this and being a part of it. Thank you to the volunteers. Thank you to the school. Um, so many people go unnoticed during a competition this big, um, even within the choirs that attended. And I think I'm going to be quiet now because I feel like I've talked for way too long and... Will, any final thoughts? We survived. Congrats. <laughs> the, from here on out, we, we've got we've got a lot of groups that are ending their seasons. Uh, we've got a couple groups with one comp left. We've got a couple with two left. So good luck to the rest of the groups. Uh, like Ethan said, thank you to everybody. And if Ethan missed you specifically in the lineup, uh, I say thank you. Uh, if you impacted the Core Classic experience in any way, shout out to the Red Roof Plus Naperville North, where I stayed. Uh, shout out to, not shout out to Illinois Highways. I hate paying tolls. But uh, th besides that, uh, it, it was a really fantastic weekend besides the $14 I paid in tolls. And uh, we will see everybody on, on the live next week, Monday, for the next episode of Show Choir Nation. All right. See everybody. Thank you for tuning in.